Officers on the pursuit call, a suspect vehicle was last seen heading north near the power station. Containment will be set up ahead of its last known direction of travel. This call is still code 6, handle on TAC 3. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, this video is pretty self-explanatory. Got something here that I use my Black Friday money for, yay. So if you guys don't know, or if you haven't read the title, this is a digital dash setup. It is pretty much one of the cheapest slash most quality ones I've seen that you can get. Because if you wanna get something from like AEM or uh, Link or something like that, you're looking at thousands of dollars on a digital dash setup. Whereas the PowerTune digital dash, which is what this is, this costed me, now I got it on sale, of course, because of Black Friday, but I think these on average, not for sale, can cost you around 500 bucks for the dashboard itself. And then there's another couple, I think there's another $100 for the mount. So you can get the dash itself or you can get the dash and the mount. And this works with pretty much most aftermarket ECUs. It works with Link and a whole bunch of other ones. They have a list on their website. Mine is set up for Link. And pretty much what you get is you get the dash itself. I ordered the mount. If you get the mount, you, you get the mount. If you don't, then you don't. But you get the dash, the mount, the installation cable and if you select the one that has gps you get the gps unit as well i didn't select gps because i already have a gps sensor going to the ecu so there's no need to have two of them and i dub i called them to make sure that i could use the one i already have and they confirmed that i would be good so no need to order a gps for me uh installation looks like it's gonna be pretty simple it does come with the hardware or the bracket and it does come with a warranty and the instructions and those are your wiring instructions right there and they have a uh, like startup tutorial and all that stuff online not so much an install tutorial but it seems to be pretty simple like once you figure out where you want to mount it I have this cable is what plugs into the actual digital dash. And then the back side of it, this plugs to the ECU. That's where you get all your data and two loose wires for the power and ground, I'm assuming. I'm assuming ground is pretty, actually I, I looked at it already. Ground is pretty simple. You just give it to a ground. Power is pretty simple. You give it to power and it can go to it needs 2.5 amps at the minimum to uh, power if you want to get technical with it but um they recommend that you wire it to accessory power instead of ignition on power because if you wire it to ignition on then the you know um the screen will power off and cycle when you go from on to start whereas if it's an accessory it'll be on like a normal screen and that's pretty much the only thing there is with it. So it's really just routing these, connecting power and ground, and then finding a mount. So we're gonna go ahead and do that today. And then the rest of this is all really just the digital setup. And we can test, see if it's working and everything like that. All right guys, we're in the car. Uh, Pretty much where I'm looking to mount this thing, I still am going to keep the stock cluster for the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge since I have those working. But when I get this on here, and the downside is I'm probably gonna have to rewrap this. But basically what I'm thinking about doing is. Thank you. I'm thinking about mounting it right here. So it'll cover up the uh, RPM gauge and the speedo gauge, but I'll still have the gas gauge right there so I can see my fuel level and the temperature gauge right there. I also still have all the lights, like the uh, check engine light and alternator light and all that stuff because that stuff is still working as well so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drill holes i already measured it out for this dashboard this bracket has to basically be mounted here where it meets up with those uh two kind of like prongs right there 
those are where all the holes are going to be drilled downside is i'm probably going to have to rewrap this piece who knows we'll see but once i mount this then it's as simple as just installing the wiring harness here we go put some light on it <laughs> but i do have to go in and check this to get that accessory power because i'm going to wire the power to the accessories um switch instead of the ignition on so that when it goes from on to start the um the screen isn't cycling on and off so that's one thing that i'm going to be doing here so let's go ahead and unplug this and if you want to know how i went ahead and wired my car i did post a video on it um on my channel so be sure to go look that i did the whole dash harness well not the dash harness i did the whole body harness so that's how i wired this thing up and got everything basically working so that my car starts and runs every time because my factory harness which is all the way back there looking like spaghetti uh that factory harness is giving me a whole lot of power and ground issues so i just ripped it all out did my own thing and now my car works so you don't have to do the research that i had to do and you can just look at what i did and kind of go from there but that white wire on this connector is the accessory wire if i remember correctly and i don't think i have that wire to anything so let's go from there all right guys i got it uh mostly installed so i'm gonna have to rewrap this piece because i had to cut the top so i can put in the screws or i might just be lazy and put a patch on it um but yeah you got the four screws at the bottom this is screwed into the mount and everything's pretty good it's really simple to get this thing in so i got it right now sitting right about here of course that's not plugged you know like the clips and stuff are not in the actual dash so it goes back a little bit farther but that's pretty much what you can expect i wanted to keep the gas gauge and the lights that pop up on that side as well as the uh temperature gauge and the lights that pop up on that side the rpm gauge and the speedo i'm not too worried about because that'll be on here anyway so it is what it is um so i <gasps> Ooh, excuse me i definitely like the positioning of it and considering the fact that you know the wheel will be right here even if i put the wheel right there it's going to be pretty decent i'll still be able to see it plus it's an led display so i'm all good with all of that the next step and it is a little cricket it kind of leans and leans this like that a little bit but it is what it is i'm not tripping on it too much um it's not going to make that much of a difference so the next step is just to wire it up give it that power and ground i'm probably going to ground it depending on how long these wires are i'm probably going to give it the same ground that i gave the leds for the uh interior lights which is not in here it is that one so i'll probably give it that ground if the ground cable on that is pretty short and then as far as power it just goes to the ignition i'll give it the accessory power all right guys so i got the power wire and the ground wire wired up just like i showed before um nothing special there but for this so i have a link ecu yours is going to be different if you have a different ecu make sure to select what ecu you have when ordering it so this is my link ecu i have two ports can one and can two i'm not 100 percent sure which one of these this goes to because this fits in either or so what i'm gonna do i know can is for communication this says obd so i'm gonna try that one first because i don't know what rs232 means so i'm gonna try it for the can 2 obd one we're gonna put the car on and see if it uh if it, it's working headphones all right i had to fix that the battery cable wasn't all the way on but i think that this should have power when it's in the on position because the main relay that gives power to everything doesn't power up until i'm in the on position so let's just try that oh we got something there 
we go. It's upside down, but I feel like there's a way that we can correct that. Holy shit. In true fashion, um, I have managed to break my power team dash. It's only been a couple days since I got it and I've already broken it. Still works, but when I was messing with the mount to put these up here, I guess at some point there was too much pressure between this bolt and the screen, so the screen is cracked. Touch screen function no longer works. Uh, PowerTune has said that these screens are replaceable, so in the future I might make a video on how to replace them. But as far as the dash itself, it still works, it's just the touch screen function doesn't work. So I could continue the video, you just won't see me touching anything. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of testing to get it communicating through the CAN system. So I already kind of covered which port it is. It's the OB, it's the CAN 2 OBD port on the Link ECU. It just plugs in and you're good to go with that one. Give it power and ground, that's the install. And then when you have the actual ECU, I mean, when you have everything installed and stuff, you want to give it power or give power to the ECU. You want to configure your dash to connect to the Wi-Fi and then set it. And I can't show this because I'm not on the East or I don't have the touchscreen functionality anymore, but you want to configure it so that it is set for link generic dash this is the setup i have on here set the ecu selection to can make sure you connect it everything else is the same and i am going to select my way back up to the top so you can see the configuration on the other side those are the dashes these are sensors and stuff the main thing you want to look at is here for startup i have link generic dash one megabit per second you're gonna apply that and outside of that that's pretty much all i got go to your link software connect the ecu last time i did that i deleted my own map all right so now you see the ec is connected at the least we have battery voltage and that's what I'm going to use to kind of determine if this is working, because if you look there, we also have battery voltage. Now you can see a zero. That's because they are not communicating. So the next thing that you do, you go to ECU controls, can set up. See how there's nothing here? That's why it's not communicating. Can one, take this mode, go to user defined. One megabits per second is fine. Keep this off. And from what I got, go, you click that one and go to link generic dash or transmit generic dash. Let's see if there's a generic dash one, but I think that here it is. Transmit generic dash, 20 Hertz, all that stuff is fine. You hit apply and then hit okay. Let's say remember to store. ECU controls, store to ECU. So now it's just seeing if it's gonna work. And judging by the fact that I have values, it might. So let's start the car. If it does start, my battery is kind of down. Let's start the car and see if the RPMs go up. Don't mind my alternator pulley. It loves it when it's turned on. Really just seeing if it's gonna work now. And we have RPM, it's still transmitting data. That's how you get it done. Unfortunately, you can't really see it because of all the glare, but it's, it's there, it's working. We're at about 700 RPM, and it just adjusted. You saw it go up a little bit. That is good. Battery shows that it's charging. I'm liking where we're at with it. Water temperature is working. 
boost is at five. I'm assuming that's like vacuum. Yeah, there you go. Power tune dash install. That's how to configure it. As far as customization, to give you a quick run through of the customization, if you have a mouse connected to the dash, you can, or if you use your finger, you could double click anywhere on that dash and it'll pop up a menu. If you click on one of the gauges, then it'll pop up a menu for that gauge. You can select what data set you want it to display, what name, what color, what font, so on and so forth. Uh, and if you click a place that's not a gauge, then you get the menu for the background. So the background is actually the, you know, the zero to 9,000 RPM and stuff. That's actually a background. The only piece that the data is pulling from is the needle itself. And the needle itself just so happens to line up with the background. This is standard from PowerTunes setup, so that's why it works. But if I wanted to delete that background, then that needle would just be free falling or free floating. Or whatever it is. Uh, let's see if I can... Oh, I thought I changed it on there. So we got everything working. And that's all that really matters now. Until I can, re until I can fix the screen. Uh, we got everything set up. So that's the customization. You can import GIFs. You can import videos for the startup video, uh, other images, so on and so forth. And that's how you can make your own complete custom dash setup. I am clearly not an expert on this. I don't think I will make my own custom dash setup like I want to. I'd probably see if I can find somebody that's going to do it for me and then do it. But as of right now, I'm going to just leave it at that. I know that my little needle is off center. That's because I broke the screen and the mouse doesn't show the cursor. So I can't fix that until I get the screen back where it was. So we're good on that. But as far as getting it in, getting it set up and working, that is pretty much it. You can configure other stuff on there like the GPS and all that stuff. I think I'm gonna have to mess with the ECU even more to get the speed, but now that you have it communicating and everything, whatever the ECU sees, the dash is gonna see. So as far as the speed, that's more so of a how touch GPS sensor to link ECU system instead of a power tune system. Power tune is just gonna display whatever the ECU displays. So with that, I'll leave it. And what we can do is we can bring it over here. And get it into position so we can come around and see it on the other side. And there you go. Now I don't really have that much of a use for this gauge oil pressure I don't really have a need for that gauge either but since this is connected directly to the sensor I'll rather I'd rather keep these two as individual gauges just in case something goes wrong with the dash or something like that then I still have those sensors that are directly connected to that sensor to still show me what I got these two are important the next thing will be boost I'll probably get a tripod or something like that for boost or see if I can mount it up here. But as far as other gauges, we're good on that. So I'm gonna clean up all this wiring and hard mount everything. But for now, I'll just say like, comment, subscribe, follow the build. Until next time.